All right, let's introduce the concept of expected value. Now, expected value is a probability weighted average of all the possible outcomes. All right, so what does that mean? <laughs> probability weighted average. All right, so we're going to say that x sub i is, um, is a random variable. All right, it's a, it's a random variable, a random uh, variable. Okay, so it's one, it's a, you know, a numerical outcome of an experiment, right? So, and it has associated probabilities. So with uh, associated, associated probabilities, probabilities, <clears throat> um, P1 and P2, and p3, whoops, 3, and so on, right, through pn. So we have n, um, n possible outcomes, all right? So the expected value is going to be this. Here's the, here's the formula for ex expected value. It's a probability-weighted average, all right? So we're going to take the outcome, the random variable outcome uh, 1 times its associated probability, plus the random variable 2 times the associated probability, plus, and so on, so on, so on, until um, until we have n, all n possible outcomes taken care of, all right? So it's the uh, random variable n times its associated probability. And that's it. That's it. So, um, so we can say that, you know, uh, the expected value, we can call it e of x. Sometimes I write ev. Sometimes I've seen it ev for expected value. But um, the expected value of this random variable is just all the possible outcomes of that random variable um, and times its associated probability and add them up. All right. So let's see this in action, though, because it'll make more sense, I think, once you see it in action. So let's take a look at example four. So in this example, um, we've got some data that gives the number of cars observed waiting in line um, at uh, two minute intervals between three and five on a certain Friday at the drive at the drive in teller of Westwood um, Westwood Savings Bank. OK, and we have the cor corresponding frequencies of all of those different outcomes. Now, this is actually the same uh, data set that we were dealing with in 8.1. All right. 8.1 example three. So we we visited this <laughs> example already in in 8.1. Um, all right, so and, and in 8.1, we came up with a probability distribution up for this uh, set of data. So we have, um, we have, I think, 60. If we add up all these, all these uh, intervals where we took data, we had 60 data points. There were two, in, two minute intervals over a, over a two hour period. So it makes sense that there would be 60 data points. All right, so um, the probability is just going to be oops, not three, two, <laughs> two out of 60, right? Nine out of 60, 16 out of 60, 12 out of 60, right? Eight out of 60, it's just the relative frequency. Um, six out of 60, four out of 60, two out of 60, one out of 60. Okay, so that's a probability distribution. And what um it, the first question just asks us to find the average number of cars waiting in line um for each 2 minute interval during the period in question okay so we actually didn't need the probabilities yet that's for part b actually <laughs> but it was there so we went ahead and filled it in i did anyway so um to find the average you got to think about what this means this means that um during Two of those two minute intervals, zero cars were waiting in line, right? It, during nine of those um, two minute intervals, one car was waiting in line. During 16 of those intervals, two cars were waiting in line. Okay, so, um, so this data has been aggregated. If we had all of the data points, we, we would see zero, zero, and then we'd see nine, 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 and then we'd see 16, uh, sorry, no, two, 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 16 times, right? So we have two occurring 16 times. We have three occurring 12 times. We have a four occurring uh, eight times, 
Okay, so that's what that means. So if I add one nine times, I get nine times one, right? If I, if I add two 16 times, I get 16 times two. So just keep in mind what this actually means because this has been aggregated. Um, we would have, if, if it hadn't been aggregated and uh, with these frequencies, um, you know, we'd have 60 data points that we'd have to add up, right? But um, so here we really only have eight, but we had to keep in mind that, that like four, the, the um, number of cars waiting in line four occurred eight times. So really it's four, 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 right? It's, it's occurring eight times. All right, so, we're but, so what we're gonna do is just basically take the number of cars and multiply by the frequency of occurrence, okay? Rather than adding zero plus zero, we'll just add zero two times. Rather than adding one plus one plus one plus one plus one, you know, nine times, I'm just gonna take one times nine. All right, and then we have two times 16. And then we have three times 12. And then we have uh, four times eight, right? We have five occurring six times. We have um, six cars in line during four of the intervals. We had um, seven cars in line during two of the intervals, and then we had eight cars in line during one interval, okay? So this is the same thing as adding up all those 60 data points, except that we're just multiplying, you know, the frequency, multiplying the number of cars times the number of times that, that the frequency of occurrence, the number of times that, uh, number of intervals that had that number of cars waiting. All right, so we add that all up and then we're gonna divide all of that by 60, okay? And what do we get? So let's see, I'll put it in my calculator. I got 185 out of 60 which as a decimal is 3.08 cars. Okay, so on average, we had about three cars, right? Because you can't have 0 0.08 of a car, right? So about three cars waiting in line. All right, the next part of this question is asking for expected value. All right, this is where we need those probabilities, which I just calculated there. Because what we're gonna do is take each data point, each, the random variable here is the number of cars waiting in line, right? That's our X, that's our X value. Maybe I should label that. So this is our X, that's our random variable. And this is our P of X or our probabilities, okay? So we're gonna use this formula up here. We're gonna take the outcome, the random variable outcome times its associated probability and then just add all those up, okay? So let's see, I gotta get, I'll try and keep both of these on the screen. So um, we had the zero outcome and its probability was two out of 60. The outcome of one car waiting in line, its probability is nine out of 60, okay? Two cars waiting in line, we have 16 out of 60 is its probability. Three cars waiting in line, we have uh, 12 out of 60. Now, I know I can reduce those fractions, but I'm not going to because <laughs> it'll make my computation easier. Um, four, uh, let's see, we had four cars waiting in line. It's probability of eight out of 60 times, right? We had five cars waiting in line, six out of 60 times. We have, uh, let me I guess come down here, uh, six um, cars waiting in line, four out of 60 times. We had, um, seven cars waiting in line, two out of 60 times, and eight cars waiting in line, one out of 60 times. All right, so now I just got to put that all in my calculator. Sometimes that's the trickiest part, getting all those numbers in there correctly. All right, so, but when I do that, I got 185 out of 60. Um, and then uh, that's the same as 3.08 cars. So you see, when you have a finite discrete um, random variable, the expected value and the average is the same. So, so expected value really is not anything new. It's a probability weighted average, but since we're dealing with finite discrete, uh, a finite discrete random variable, it's really the same thing. And you can kind of see that, like I could factor out, you know, up here, depends on how, how good your algebra skills are. You can see there's a common factor of 1 60th in each one of these terms, all right? So I could actually um, factor out 1 60th, and then I essentially get 
um, the same thing as, as I have in part A. So these really are equivalent co uh, computations. So let me write that down. So the average, the average, or the mean, right? The mean and the expected value, expected value are the same, the same um, for a finite discrete, finite discrete, discrete random <clears throat> variable. All right, so there you go. All right, so I will um, meet you in the next video.